Howdy all you YouTubers, it's Toss Gregor. Just thought I'd do another quick video blog for the evening. I hope that you guys are enjoying the time portal. I apologize for my poor read on it. One of the, the biggest problems with reading something like that to you is the grammar and the mistakes that I made sometimes is a little uh, disjointed when you're not reading it with a properly text with commas and proper quotation and so forth. But uh, anyway, I hope you're enjoying that. I was going to tell you about my little adventure this weekend. I decided I needed to re-image my computer. So, backed up all my data, wiped out the system, and started throwing it all back on. So, of course, I'm a Gen 2 uh, Linux person, so that means starting from scratch and building it all. It's kind of good to do that every once in a while. You get a few good ideas and you find out what works and what doesn't work when you're doing that. I found out very quickly and um, slightly disheartened about it. I thought, well, shoot, Gen 2's built this live DVD version. Let's try to install Gen 2 using that. And while that's automated a lot of the tedious prompts and, and exercises that you have to do manually, it blew up halfway through, left me high and dry, with nothing to show for it after I'd spent a couple hours working on it, and had to pretty much start all over anyway. So I did that on Saturday, and it took me a little bit longer than I had liked, but I had to go back to the minimal to CD. And, you know, I, I just think installing Gen 2 from scratch, you're just better off just using the minimal CD and doing everything from scratch. And the neat thing about doing that is that when you go from point A to point B with that CD, you're learning everything that it takes to building your own kernel from scratch, learning what hardware is in your computer, how to configure it, for your specific computer. And one good hint, it always helps to have two computers available to you when you're doing that. Because sometimes, even though you think you have all the resources that you need, you think you've downloaded and printed out the instructions, and you've got the CD that you need, as soon as you wipe your hard drive, you realize, oh, drat. These instructions just are lacking. I know there's something else that's here that I'm missing. I need to get this fixed. And so it's really helpful that that second computer. I know a lot of you guys don't have that luxury, uh, but it always helps when running Gen 2, or not just Gen 2, but any version of Linux, to be able to go to the internet and search for help when you run into a snag or a problem. And even though I've been using Linux now for, oh, very seriously for the last six years, and off and on for the last eight or nine years, really, even I run into snags, even with a system like Gen 2 that I'm very familiar with. But uh, I had to go through that and set everything up, get it all going. And of course, the, the biggest problem that most people have with Gen 2 is that its biggest strength is its biggest hindrance. And that is, once you've configured your make files and the way your bootstrap's going to be and everything else, you are configuring every package by hand. And you're compiling every package the system uses from source code. What that means is that if you were running Debian or Ubuntu or Red Hat or SUSE or any of these other Slackware, uh, the list goes on and on, if you're running any of those, most likely you're installing everything from packages that have been pre-built for a specific architecture of computer. Whether that's a Pentium 4, an AMD Athlon, whatever your system style might be. And those are already pre-built for you and all you have to do is say install it and boom. Just like that within 30 seconds you've got your whole KDE system set up or you've got your whole X system set up or GIMP installed or Mozilla installed, something like that. But with Gentoo, that means you tell it to emerge the package, 
it searches for what dependencies it requires, and then you sit back and wait, and wait, and check it, and wait, and oh no, it blew up. Oh, why did it blow up? So then you have to figure out why did this package not like the way the system was? Luckily this time I think it only blew up about three or four times for me and each time it was a very simple issue of uh, having the right use commands for the application or whatever else and I was able to fix it up and get it back up and running but it took me from Saturday morning when I started until Monday afternoon before I really had a usable system because of all the compiling that it had to do. When you look at KDE alone, that's around two or three hundred packages that it's got to compile and put out there. And then you add, of course, the X system, uh, which gives you your graphic backbone that KDE sits on. And then you've got to think about, okay, CMonkey, I need CMonkey. I need GIMP, you know, for graphics. I definitely need Kino. Kino is what I do on my video. Uh, editing, or not really editing, but video capturing in. You, know, you need GAIM, G-A-I-M, for your, for your um, chatting. And of course, open office so that you can do applications. And um, When I say uh, that, I mean Word documents, Excel, you know, d database, that sort of thing. And you got to make sure you've got all those little things. So all those applications you've got to install. And, you know, open office, for instance, that's about 200 megs of downloads alone just for that but pretty impressive I've got uh, 12 megabit download speed and I was getting 2.4 megs per second on a download which meant that I was downloading 289 megs of data the other day and it took me just a little over two minutes now I'm impressed with that because if I go to my office and sometimes because I'm in the IT field I have to download um, uh, ISOs for different system images and those can be anywhere from 600 megs for a CD up to 3 or 4 gigs for a DVD I might as well come home and log into the system remotely and download that stuff because if I try to do that from work it can take me hours and hours and hours when at my house only takes me half an hour 45 minutes I can get a whole 3 gig DVD in about 45 minutes so that's pretty awesome but I'm rambling a lot about this, but anyway, I just wanted to, to share my experience with Gen 2. Re-imaged and got myself all back up and running. All the neat new things. You know, KDE's out at 3.57. I don't know if that's the latest stable, but that's the latest stable that Gen 2's doing. And it's really, really kind of cool with the, the latest uh, 2.622 kernel. And I was able to, to get some pretty fancy stuff working on the system, so some neat translucency effects that now KDE, KDE has built in, uh, some text-to-speech stuff uh, for game, uh, a pretty neat uh, display and interface when it boots up using splash screens. So I'm really excited because I'm glad I rebuilt my system because there were a lot of things that had been updated since 2005 when I last did a major overhaul of this thing and it just really spiffed up my system pretty nicely and and it's it's lots of fun. I I find it stimulating to rebuild my system. I guess I'm weird. I mean 3 or 4 or 5 years ago when I was trying to find a flavor of Linux I liked the most it wasn't uncommon for me to rebuild my system maybe once every two or three days trying all kinds of different flavors of Linux you know because like I said I tried SUSE which I stayed with for a long time I really like SUSE uh, for beginners SUSE is an awesome flavor of Linux everything is run off of RPMs right, uh, those, that stands for Red Hat Packet Manager packages I guess and everything's installed and, and, and there are a lot of good there's a lot of good support for Gen not Gen 2 I'm sorry SUSE out there and it's very modular uh, but ever since Novell bought them I've been very unhappy with them I haven't liked the direction that they're going and I'm not been too keen on a lot of the things that they've been doing with SUSE which is why I kinda 
drug my feet a couple years ago and found another OS version that I liked more. But Slackware was another awesome flavor that I liked. Ubuntu is actually a flavor of Linux that came out after I started using Gen 2. And at first it was just, I think, a live CD slash DVD that you could download and try. But it's become really popular. I'm hearing a lot of very good things about Ubuntu. And maybe I'll throw another hard drive in and try it out. Because I tried Ubuntu over the summer. <clears throat> a couple different flavors. And I wasn't very happy with the way it was installing. I just, uh, back in 1989, and shoot, I was only 15 years old, I think, when I wrote that. Probably 14 if that was the beginning of that year. So... Yeah, most likely I was 14 now that I think about it, because that was probably the eight, my 8th grade year in school when I wrote that. And one thing that you'll know is when you're reading your own work, even that it's old and all that, it still comes across. Maybe my unfamiliarity with the actual Ubuntu system uh, mixed in with uh, you know some of its own quirks. You know, that's the thing when you buy or get any type of a, a different flavor of Linux. They do things slightly differently. And you just have to learn those little nuances all on your own. So my question to some of my Linux friends out there is, what flavor of Linux do you like the best and why? And do you have any questions about why you should go to Linux or what benefits you have to Linux? You know, things like that. You know, let me know, and I'll do what I can to start creating some uh, better videos, I guess, uh, more based upon what you guys might be interested in. I know somebody wrote me and wanted me to talk a little bit more about Minix 3, so I'm going to try and do a short video about Minix 3 here soon. Um, need to find out. I need to get my facts straight. I'll do a little bit more research. I tried that out. Now, Minix 3 is really neat, but... It's a very small, minimalistic OS that you're really not going to be able to do anything with. It's more of a proof, proof of concept than it is an actual usable, in the terms of a gener general user type OS. You can put it on a system with, that has as little as 8 megs of RAM, and it will run. But all you're pretty much going to get is a console with a few basic applications that will work and that's about all. Now it may have some potential to growing into something really big in the future and I think it's pretty, nice, pretty neat that, that people are actually looking at it right now and so I'll talk about that a little bit later in a different uh, video blog in a week or two but yeah send me your comments let me know what you think what are you guys interested in you know do you have questions like what are the biggest differences between Debian and and Gen 2 and SUSE or why do SUSE users use RPMs which are the same as Red Hat users but Debian users use a .deb type of a package uh, versus Slackware that uses the tar um, gzip files that just gets the information out of that built straight for a, for a Slackware device. Yeah, if you have those type of questions or, or if you're having troubles let me know um, I don't claim to be an expert, but I love to look into Linux. I love to try out things, and I love to try and fix problems and try to find solutions for people. So, uh, go Linux. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye.